Good day, everyone. You're welcome back to this same channel. Thanks for always being there. What I have today is how to cut a female lab coat. There is difference between cutting a female lab coat and that of a male lab coat. I'll create a time to make a video on how to cut a male lab coat. But for this particular one, it's a female lab coat, like I've just said. So the first thing I'm going to do right now is to... Uh, show you what we'll be needing for this same uh, tutorial i'll be needing a pair of scissors as you can see right here then chalk i'll be needing a ruler to rule then of course my measurement then also lest i forget i will be making use of my ruling tape very very important so the first thing i'm going to do right here is to consider my measurements and to look into my measurements i'm going to consider the biggest part of the measurement and of course the biggest part of the measurement is the hip so the one quarter of the hip is what i will be using to cut it out then after one quarter of my hip circumference i'm going to in, in add some allowances so some allowances between four to five inches so because this lab coat is meant to be a free gown, so that's why the allowances is up to that extent. So the next thing I'm going to do right now is to cut it out, after which I've incorporated the seam allowances and all that, and then I impute my reference line. Now as you can see right here, I've inputted my reference line. So I'm going to start by inputting my measurement properly. So right now, this first line is a zero line and this is my shoulder line. So I have the shoulder for this same lab coat to be 15 inches and 15 divided by two gives me 7.5. So I'm going to add extra 0.5, making it eight inches. So I place my ruling tape at this edge. So I'm going to mark my eight inches right here. Now, I'm going to mark three quarter of an inch as my shoulder slope. So I have my three quarter here. As my shoulder slope. So right now, I'm going to come down to the neckline. I'll be making the neckline because I wouldn't want it to be too wide three inches that is for the width of the neckline i have my three inches right here so here i'm going to connect this um, shoulder slope to this point here so that is that now i move to the hammer the hammo line so i have the hammo line here to be three one quarter of an i mean eight one quarter of an inch eight one quarter is okay by me because i wouldn't want it to be too tight because it's a free gown like i said earlier on so i'm going to i have it eight one quarter so right here what i have on the shoulder line so that i will have a straight line I have it, I bring it down to this um, chest line. I mark an also it here, so that by the time I connect the ammo line, I will achieve a very straight line. So right now, all I need to do is just to connect this line to this point here. So I will just make sure I'm connecting exactly on the line. So that I will achieve the best at the end of the day. So as you can see, I've connected the lines. So right now, I'm going to place my ruling tape. This is my bust line. I'm going to place it. Like I said, I said the bust. Uh, sorry, the bust is same. Um, thirty-four inches. So thirty-four inches divided by four. That is one quarter of thirty-four inches. So I'll be having eight point five inches. I have 8.5 inches here. Remember, I told you that this is meant to be a free gown. So I'm going to ease it with two inches. So 
I ease with two inches. Then my seam allowance, one inch. Depends on, you can make it one or one and a half inches. So but for me, I'm making it one inch. One inch is okay for me. So that is that on the bust line. So I quickly go to the waistline. I have the waist of this to be 28 inches. And 28 divided by 4 gives me 7 inches. So I'm going to mark my 7 inches right here. So I'm going to ease it with 2 inches. So I have my 2 inches for my ease. Then 1 inch. Remember I said in the, my previous video that whatever you use as a seam allowance, it has to be uniform. If you started with 2 inches as your seam allowance, it ought to be two, 2 inches also or true, so that you won't have a contract uh, line. So right now, I move to the hip line. Hip, I have this hip to be 36 inches. 36 divided by 4, that is 1 quarter of 36, gives me 9 inches. So I'm going to mark my 9 inches right here. Now on the hip here, I'm going to ease it with uh, 1.5 inches instead of 2. So I'm easing with 1.5 inches. Then the seam allowance, of course, 1 inch. I have it here. So, lest I forget, I'm working on the back piece of this same of this same gown. This is the back piece. So right now, I quickly go to the down part. Now the length for this same for this gown is 40 inches. As you can see, me place it on the zero line. That is the shoulder line downward. I have 40 inches. I have 40 inches. So I've decided to. So I added 2.5 inches for my M M allowance. So that is half of it for the for the one on the shoulder line. Then two for the folding at the hem. So right now, I'm going to place my rolling tape here on the down part. So on the down part, whatever I got on the hip side, that is exactly what I'm going to transfer on the down part. Now, I have uh, I have the total of 11.5 uh, year or 11 three quarter. So that's exactly what I'm going to transfer to this down part or I can do it one after the other that is here I have a 9 inches I bring 9 inches down to this place for the sake of our beginners so that I don't confuse you 9 inches then on the hip side remember I ease it with 1.5 so so I will also ease here 1.5 inches then the seam allowance 1 inch so I have it here so at the end of the day, you discover that this is exactly what I have here, I will be having here. So as I have it here also, is what I will be transferring to the hemline. So I have it, 9, 9, 9 inches, 1.5 inch for the ease, then 1 inch for the seam allowance. So right now, I'll quickly go to the upper part. For the depth of my neckline, since this one is the back piece, I'm going to make it just one inch because it's going to have a collar. And because of this, you shouldn't make it too deep. So I have one inch right here. So I will also come down here, one inch. So I connect this to this, after which I make a slight curve. So you could use your French curve, but you can also use your free hand depending on what you want. So I quickly come to the ham hole. I'm going to measure right from this part after the slope of the, uh, the shoulder slope. I have eight one quarter. So I'm going to divide this by two. So I'll be having something here. So I'm going to make a curve. At this point here, I'm going to just make like 1.25. I 
of your guide. So, so what I have on the bust line, I'm going to transfer exactly here. So, exactly, I, I'll transfer it on the chest line. Remember here on the bust line, I have 8.5. So, I quickly transfer that 8.5. Then I ease it with two, two inches, then plus one inch, same allowance. So I can now make my curve. So as you can see, so right now, all these lines, I'm going to connect these lines together using my ruler. So I first connect this. Then I move down to this, to the waistline, I connect, then to the hip line, I connect, then to the down part, down to the hem line, so I connect, straight like that. Can you see? So right now, exactly what I connected here is what I will be doing on the second part here. So that is to show to me, to show me, especially for the beginners, that this side is the what the seam allowance. So I'm going to connect, connect this. I move to this. Then this, then afterward, the down part, so right now, is to cut it out. So I'm going to start from the down part to cut it out. Now, as you can see right here, I've placed my back panel on my fabric to cut out the front uh, piece. So right now, I would have done it separately, but in the, for the sake of uh, beginners, so that's the reason why I'm just doing it, because it's easier like this. Once you place it on the fabric, you just use this to cut it out and do some little adjustments to the front pattern. So right now, you can see this extra here. This one, have oh uh, the width of this is five inches but you could decide to make your same five between it's supposed to be between five to five point five inches so that it shouldn't be too short and it shouldn't be too wide so it's between that range five to five point five uh, inches but my I'm making my five inches is okay by me so right now the first thing I'm going to do right here is this zero line, I'm going to mark it. I mark it. So I will also mark this place, this point here. So I can now connect. Connect. So it's going like this. So, and also this one comes in like this. So right now I'm going to remove this so I will now connect this line to this point remember this is my shoulder line so right now I haven't done this so all I need to do is just to trace this down with my chalk and I also 
after this, after tracing it, it's either I trace it or I just use my um my scissors and cut it out first, after which I proceed with the next thing. So I think it's safer to use to cut it out straight. So I'll be starting from the base of this thing now, cutting it out. So I will also trace it, tracing the shape down to the hammer here. So as you can see right here, I've traced it out using my pair of scissors to cut the shape out up to this point. Lest I forget, this thing, allowance here is meant for the collar. The collar allowance is for the collar and also the button seat. This one here. So right now I'm going to proceed. The next thing I'm going to do right here is to cut out the, the front neckline. And before I do that, so I'm going to, you remember this is 5 inches for the width. So I'm going to mark 3 inches like so. It's either I mark it using my chalk or I launch it. Just little launch. <coughs> can you see? So right now, I can now, at this point, I'm, I'm going to fold it, the 3 inches which I've just launched, fold it, making sure it doesn't extend that three inches. So I'm going to do that all the way downward. As you can see me pushing it inward with that same um, allowance, the three inches which I've just... So I'll make sure I make it downward. So to give me a straight line. So right now, the next thing I'm going to do right now, so I will just make sure I trace where this neckline, the back piece neckline ends. I'm going to mark it on my front, the front, on the fabric, like this. And you see, then from there, I can make, um, place my ruling tape and mark the depth for the front neckline. Or if you don't want to do it that way, I will just make sure, I will just place my railing tape. Can you see? So I'm just, I will just, I will simply mark three inches downward as the depth for the front neckline. Can you see? I have three inches. But instead of me starting the line from here, I wouldn't want to stain this same back piece. So I will just trace it out, trace it out. Then I mark my three inches here. Or I place it like this. I mark three inches. And you see, I place it on this zero line. I mark three inches downward. Now, remember I've made a demarcation right here. So from here, I'm going to place my tape. I mark three inches. So I connect these lines straight downward. So right now, I'm going to connect this to meet this line. So I will just make a curve from here to match this. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do right here is to cut out the front the front neckline first and you see so i can now call the is to cut out the back the back and piece sorry neckline so so it will be easier for me very easy for me to shape that of the front neckline.
So, so right now, the next thing I'm going to do is to shape the, the shoulder slope. is both the front and the back piece as you can see so this is my the back panel and this is the front panel so that by the time I cut my collar so this one will go in very well so it won't that's the reason why I make it like three you can make yours three and a half but it shouldn't be too much so that it doesn't uh, give some headaches so right now I'm going to remove this since I'm done with the back piece. I'm going to reshape, reshape this um, front, um, this front hammer line. So I'm going to reshape it. So let me just use my ruler. So I'm coming in by one inch right here one inch or 1.25 right here so i'm going to connect this line to the upper part of the ammo line so i reshape because the front ammo is meant to be a bit deeper than that of the, the back. So right now, I'm going to reshape it. So we are done with the cutting of the bodies. Can you see? So by the time I cut my collar and I fix it, this one will go in very well and there will be no any uh, any problem at the end of the day. So the next thing right now is to cut the sleeve of this same gown. So I'm going to fold but because saying uh, I'm going to cut just one one sleeve because of this saying uh, the fabric is almost not enough. So after cutting it, I will use it to cut the other one. So right now I have the length of this sleeve to be 23 inches. So I'm going to mark from here 23 inches and I have it here. So I extend my ruling tape to the other side here so that I can have a very straight line. So I'm going to connect these lines together. So I connect these lines together. So for the ending allowance at the base, I'm going to mark 2.5 inches depending on how wide you want the ending to be. So you can make yours 3, you can make yours 2. So I'm making 2.5 inches like I said. So I'm going to, then I connect this also. So right now, I can now cut this off. So I move to the upper part here. So I'm going to mark 5.5 downward. So I mark 5.5 downward. So 
I place my rolling tape diagonally like this. So I'm going to connect Sorry, I need to achieve a very straight line here. Okay, so right now, all I need to do, I'm going to measure what I have here is saying uh, almost 10. So I mark from here, I mark like a uh, 6.5 or 6 inches. So right now, I'm going to make a curve at this edge here. A curve like one inch or three quarter of an inch so I haven't done this so i move to the base i have the base to be 12 inches 12 divided by 2 gives me 6 plus 1 inch allowance so right now i'm going to connect this to this so i connect then i also extend this to the base to the ending line straight like that So right now, I'm going to cut it out. So I will cut, after cutting this out, I'm going to use this to cut the second piece. Sorry, when I was doing the measurement the other time, I made a mistake. The wrist was actually, um, the wrist circumference was actually 10 inches. And I have it here, 10 divided by 2 gives me 5 plus 1 inch allowance. So instead of me extending it to here, so this is the correct line. So I'm going to connect this line to this, to this point here, the arm move point. So you could make yours, the allowance to be 0 0.5 is not mandatory, is one inch. So, in case you want to make yours. So, right now, I'm going to use it to cut it out. So right now, I use this to trace what I have here. So I haven't done this, so I can now reshape. I'm going to launch this one as well so that I will know the center uh, point so I'm going to place it right side to right side so if you see the fabric that has both the right side and the wrong side so I'm going to place it like this after which I reshape just because of the front. I reshape by one inch or three quarter of an inch. So to take care of the front uh, arm. So it's 
So I will need to reshape it because the front has to be a bit deeper than that of the back. Um, so that is that about sleeve. You can see. So, so what I will be doing right now is to cut the two pockets at the downside of the of the gown or of this um, lab coat. So you can see my fabric is on fold. I'm folding it into two equal parts. Now I'm going to measure. Now the length of this, I'm going to make the length seven, but I will be adding some allowances. So I have seven right here. Let me turn it like this. Seven inches, that is, for the length. So I'm going to, it depends on what you want anyway. You can make yours eight, but it shouldn't be too longer. So I'm going to add extra three inches to this same length, making it 10 inches. So the three inches which I'm adding, is is incorporating um the mouth of the of the of this pocket because i'm going to fold it in at the mouth of the pocket and also the down part i'll be using just one an inch to fold it in so that's why i'm adding as so much as three inches so right now i'm going to connect this line together you can see here i have the total of 10 inches you could decide to make yours nine inches the total of it nine inches that is two plus seven making it nine so like i said this one is okay by me so i'm going to connect this line now coming to the width i have the width the width of this pocket, I have it as 8 inches. By the time I fold it in, fold it in, so I will be having like 6.5. That is for the width of this um, pocket. So right now, you can see I'm cutting two pockets at a time. So right now, I'm going to cut this off. So all I need to do is to share this is to two to slash it on the side. So I have my two pockets already. So I believe you have gained something in this same tutorial. If you have actually gained something, please don't forget to hit on the like button just to appreciate this work. Thank you. Now. The next thing I will be doing right now is to cut the chest pocket, which is going to be the pen pocket. It's going to be a pen pocket. So, and you know that the pen pocket is not too wide. So, I will be making it one for the width. I will be making it 1.5. So, I'll start by measuring my 1.5 here. Now the length, I'll be making the length of a pen. I think I'll be making use of six is okay. Six. So plus two inches extra or 2.5 inches extra because I'll have to fold it both down and, uh, and also the uh, edge. So I will include, let me just include two inches is okay. So I'll be having the total of thing. Uh, So connecting these lines together. So I have the total of eight inches for the length of the pen on the chest. So right now I'm going to cut this off. Remember I said the width is 1.5. So I'm going to retrain this to give me my 1.5. So we have come to the end of this tutorial. Thanks for watching. If you have any question, kindly drop your question in the comment section. Please feel free to share this video and click on the like button to appreciate this work. If you are yet to subscribe, click on the subscribe button below and you click on the notification bell. I will always make sure you put on your notification bell so that 
when I release a new video, you will get notified. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Hello friends, you're welcome back to this channel. What I have today is how to show you tips on how to sew a perfect collar. But this collar I will be cutting is, I'll be sewing it on a lab coat. Or you can easily use this collar to sew any collar at all. Talk of any collar. So I'm going to give you the tip on how to sew a very perfect, like I said, and a neat collar. So all you need to do is just to watch this video to the end. So right now, I've already measured the, the neckline of my lab coat and it gives me 16, let me say approximately 16 inches. So right now, here is my interface. I've cut it out. So I'm going to fold this interface into two, as you can see right here. So right now, I'm going to pick my chalk. So I'm going to measure. Remember, it's on fold. This interface is on fold. I'm going to measure 16 divided by 2 gives me 8 inches. I'm going to measure 8 inches upward. So I move to the upper part right here. I measure 8 inches as well. So I'm going to connect these lines together using my ruler. So it's better you, you I use uh, a pin to hold it so that it doesn't um, shake or move here and there. So especially for beginners, it's better I will advise that you pin it down using your pin. So right now, as you can see here, I've connected the lines. So depend on it actually depends on how wide you want your collar to be. So now I'm going to measure two three quarter of an of uh, two three quarter inches, and I have my two three quarter inches right here. So I place my ruling tape also on this edge. I mark. Two, three quarter as well. So right now I'm going to connect these lines to meet this. Connect these lines together. Sorry. Can you see I've achieved a straight line. So right now I'm going to place my rolling tape. I will look for the midpoint of this line. Eight. I will look for the midpoint of eight inches. That gives me four inches. I will mark it right here. So right now I'm going to go up here by three quarter of an inch I go up by three quarter of an inch and you see so right now I'm going to connect these lines together so and but I will be using my free hand to connect these lines together can you see so I'll be having a, a, a curve shape, as you can see right here. So right now, this is the down part of the collar. Why this is the, the, the upper part. So right now, I'm going to extend this line, this point, by, let me just say, half an inch. That is 0 0.5 of an inch. 0 0.5. So here is my 0 0.5. From this point to this point, I have my 0 0.5. So I'm going to go upward by also 0 0.5 upward. So I mark 0 0.5 upward. So I connect. 
Can you see? So right now, I'm going to place my tape on this line. So you can see I have 8.5 inches now. Now that I've extended this line, so I have 8.5. So I'm going to look for the midpoint. So I have the midpoint here, but I'm going to come or uh, extend my line to five inch. So I'm measuring five inch, five inches from this side. So I will mark it here. So right now I'm going to connect this line to this line to give me like a curve effect. So right now, the next thing I'm going to do is to connect this line to meet this point here. So you can see it's very easy. It's very, very easy. All you need to do, just watch it like I said. When you watch it, you will surely get it. So the next thing right now is just to cut it out. So I will be very careful in doing this so that I will have the perfect shape of uh, what I've drawn on this uh, interface. So, can you see? So right now, I will just trace it so I don't need to stress myself once I've uh, I've drawn it. All I need to do is just to trace it. So, can you see? So, I'm going to reshape it to give me the curve effect which I want. Just shaping it a bit. Can you see? So right now, I will also go to shape this one also to give me just little, just to match the curve at the base. So this is what I have. So this is the air, uh, the, the, the upper part, why this is the down part. So the next thing I'm going to do right now is to place this interface on my fabric. So I'm going to fold my fabric into two. Then I place it on it. Then I, I iron it. That's the next thing. So as you can see right here, I've uh, ironed uh, my interface on my fabric. And the fabric is two. Can you see? Two of these. Because I'm going to use... Or the down part to turn in this uh, upper part. So right now, in running my stitch, I'm going to start from here. So I won't run my stitch on this interface. I'm going to make it um, a little bit farther than uh, the the interface. So I'm going to start the running of my stitch right here. Can you see? Not too far. Not too far. But just making sure that I do not run the stitch on, on the interface. So I've just show you the way I'm going to draw it or the way I'm going to run my stitch on this same uh, uh, color. So and the same thing is going to run like this, down like this, then I come here. Now the up the down part here, I won't run it, I will leave it like that. So after I'm done, then I'm going to show you what I've achieved. Now I've run my I've run my stitch across this line, and like I said the other time, I didn't um place I didn't run the stitch on the interface. You can see this is where the stitch started. Can you see? Can you see? So not exactly on the interface, so that by the time I turn it out, so I will have a perfect um, look of the stitch. So the next thing I'm going to do right now 
is to cut the excess which I have off. So I'm going to start from the side right here. I will cut the excess. So as you can see right here, I've, I'm done with cutting out the excesses. If you look at the down part here, you discover that the what I left here is a bit longer than what I have here. The reason is that by the time I turn it, it may be shorter so that I won't have any sh uh, shorter uh, of fabric. So after that, after which I've turned it, so I can now reshape this side perfectly. So the next thing I'm going to do is just to turn it inward. I'm going to turn it. On both sides. So. I look for a way of making it. Bringing out the pointed edge. Right here. So. So the next thing I'm going to do right now, you can see this one, which is the outer one, covers the inside. So by the time this is how it's going to be, it's going to stay at the end of the day. This is how it's going to be. So this one can go in. So you won't be able, the, the, the stitches will not be visible at the end of the day because it won't stay together like this. It will not stay together like this. So it's going to... I'm going to bring it inward easily like this just because I didn't run the stitch on the interface. So the next thing is just to iron it to stay perfectly. Can you see? So I've ironed the, my collar. This is what I have. Let me bring it very close so that you can see. You can see the line. The inner one, you can see it inward. So this one is going to serve the, as the outer one. So you will hardly, you can't see any stitch which I've run on the lines here. So it automatically bring this in to cover it so that you won't see any stitch being run on this uh, line. So right now I'm going to cut the excesses which I have at the base of So right now, the next thing I'm going to do is to fix my collar on my neckline. So in fixing my collar to the neckline, so the first thing I'm going to do here and which I've done, I'm going to, this is the neckline, I'm going to make it, I'm going to fold it into two equal parts like so, making sure that the shoulder point matches each other. Then I make sure it's, uh, it's folded into two equal parts as you can see right here. So the center back I'm going to launch and, and which I've done. So let me re it. So I notch it. So can you see? So have a notch it now. The collar, the collar seat and uh, the button seat. You remember? Oh, sorry. I'm going to measure when I was cutting. I left five inches. As you can see, and I've launched it. Look at it. This is where it started from, down to this place. I measure five inches. So, and that is what I did on the other side too. So, I measure, I left five inches extra when I was cutting the front panel. 
So this um, 5 inches is serving as my collar and also the button seat. So right now to stitch the collar to the neckline, so from that 5 inches, from this point here, I'm going to measure 1.5 inches to my left hand side. So I'm going to measure 1.5 inches and uh, this is what I have. So I'm going to turn it, turn the extra one. Remember from here to here is 1.5 inches. So this is the extra. So the extra, I'm going to turn it in like this, which means this side, this color is times two of 1.5. That gives me three inches. So the two inches is the one that extends inward like this. So it has to be a, a long, long, a bit, so that when you don't make it long, by the time I finish stitching, something will be pulling out. So it's better you even extend it to like between 2 to 2.5. So in cutting or reserving your collar, you see that you make it 5.5 inches or 5 inches. But I actually make my 5 inches. So I'm going to fold it in like this. Remember, I measure from here 1.5. Now, another one coming to fold it, making it 3. So, the extra one is 2 inches, which is going to go inward. So, right now, at this point, that's where I'm going to insert my collar. And in inserting my collar, I'll make, I'll make sure that the one that has the interface is the one facing down. Can you see? It's the one facing down. This one does not have any interface. So that is this is how I'm going to place it. So I place it right at that exact point. Like this. So I will start my stitch, running my stitch right from this edge here to this point where this one ends. So by the time I get to this point, I'm going to notch it so that it will be easier for me to continue the stitch, not even to continue the stitch because I will have to bend this inner one inward so that it will be easier for me to bend the one that has uh, the interface. Sorry, let me open it so that I will, at the end of the day, I will be able to bend this one easily while I continue my stitching with this like this so that by the time i finish running this stitch now to close it up will be easier for me so that's the next thing i hope you get it so by the time i'm done i'm going to show you what i've i mean